so far we are up to 64 uh, people and they're still coming in. So that's great. Sorry, uh, now that we're uh, waiting, um, the chat function seems to be disabled. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, I think it is for some, but not for others. I am not sure. Um, who's our tech support? Yeah, Lana, it's disabled, at least for us. This is okay. John Valentine. So I mean, oh, so John, good. thank you. Um, we need the tech support person on the team to, to see if they can fix that problem. Hi, this is tech support. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> Thank <you>. <laughs> <laughs> the disembodied voice of tech support. <laughs> Who is critical? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think. Um, um, are we ready to begin, Julie? Yeah. Um, why don't you go ahead and start, um, and I will see what I can figure out about why the chat function has decided to be mean to us today. Okay, that would not be good. All right, um, hopefully the chat function will behave. So uh, welcome and thank you all for, for being here today. My name is Lana Zamaro and I'm here representing the League of Women Voters of Concord Carlisle along with many others who worked really hard to produce this forum. Um, so before we begin, though, I need to uh, make a statement, read a statement about uh, the video aspect of this. Um, this um, event is going to be recorded on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Concord Carlisle, which is the producer and owner of the recording. When aired, posted, or otherwise distributed, this recording will be available to news media reporting on this event. No part of this recording may be used in political campaign advertising. So uh, I, we have an, a very, very packed agenda, so I'm going to be brief. The League is a nonpartisan organization. We focus on supporting the tenets of our representative form of democracy in the U.S. Representative democracy means the government is in our hands. The League's tagline is democracy is not a spectator sport. Certainly focusing, running for office is a high demonstration of participating and showing up. But also, but also your presence here today is a demonstration of showing up and participating. And voting is a key part of our responsibility as citizens. And now onto our program, I'm very, very pleased to introduce our moderator, Nancy Brumbach, Nancy is a trained moderator and a past president of the Sudbury League. I could say more, but she asked me not to. So Nancy, take it away. Thank you, Lana. And welcome everyone this morning. Briefly, here is how this morning's program will work. We'll start with the candidates in uncontested races, and then we will have panels in each of the contested races for select board, school committee, and library board of trustees. I will go over the format for each section as we get to it. The community was invited to submit questions by email and the league developed questions based in part on those questions from, from all of you. You may also write questions in the chat if we get that working. Please specify in your question which office it's for and, and note that the question cannot be directed at any one single candidate. It has to be directed at the entire panel. With their time limits, we will not be able to ask all the questions we have. So if yours is not answered, we encourage you to reach out to the candidates directly and ask them. And an automatic timer will be on the screen to keep things moving. And I'll stop the candidates when their time is up. 30 second rebuttals will be allowed at my discretion, but my preference is to use the time for questions and answers rather than rebuttal. So now we will start with the four uncontested candidates who uh, agreed to participate today. They will each have three minutes to introduce themselves and to outline their priorities for the office they are seeking. Starting with the Board of Assessors, where there's one seat 
for a three-year term, and the uncontested candidate is Karen Yeyenman. I hope I said that right, Karen Yeyenman. <laughs> so Karen, you're up for three minutes. Great, thanks, Nancy. Um, and thanks for putting on this forum. This is just a great opportunity for people to hear what we have to say. I won't, I'll keep my comment short because I know we have a number of contested seats. I've been in Carlisle about four years. Uh, with I live on South Street with my husband, Ollie, and my two girls. Um, Jacqueline's in the middle school, the Carlisle Middle School, and Audrey is in ninth grade over at CCHS. And um, I'm running for the Board of Assessors because I really wanted a chance to serve. Uh, I've been following what's all the different issues in the Mosquito, who does a great, a great job keeping us informed and just really um, continually impressed with the amount of work that people put in in this town to kind of keep the town running, to balance the issues and to really hear people's voices. And I wanted to be part of that. And honestly, at this time during COVID, like many people, I've done a lot of reflection on how I'm spending my time, where's my attention, what's the best way to really show up and really focusing more locally, getting more involved and really um, taking part in shaping the direction of this town. Um, it seemed like an important move for me at this time. So I see this, I'm new to town government, uh, but I bring a background in leadership. Uh, I have degree, graduate degrees in education and business. I've worked as a real estate, a licensed real estate agent in the past. So I have relevant experience, um, but really this is my entry into town government and I'm super excited to, um, to really start to get to know and work with some of the different boards. Um, key issues facing the board have to do with some tough times we've had in, in recent times um, with some illnesses on in key positions. And now we have new, a new principal assessor in place. We have some backlog to work through. Um, that involves different kinds of backlog, both in terms of keeping in compliance with regular assessment cycles, um, as well as new development. So uh, we're also looking at a number of different ways to um, address some of the needs in the town around um, uh, tax deferral programs for seniors and some other ways to really address some of the needs that have to do with um, giving um, uh, opportunities for people to, to really stay in the town and, and be productive. Um, and then finally, um, just realigning roles across the new assessor and the assistant assessor, which we're in the process of finding um, and how we use consultants and just thinking what is the best way to keep the department running. Um, so a lot of different issues facing us, but I'll stop there and just say super excited to be on board and um, ho hope to, to hope to be on board soon. <laughs> Thank you. For the Board of Health, there are two three-year seats available. Candidate Catherine Galligan was invited, but she is not participating today. And so we will hear from Anthony Mariano for Board of Health. Hi, uh, Three minutes. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I'm, you can call me Tony Mariano, that's what I go by. But um, I grew up here in Carlisle and um, a, one of the few lucky people that have, that have spanned a, a lifetime here. And uh, my father still lives in the house on Pagebrook Road where I grew up. I live over on North Road. Uh, my wife and I um, raised our family here. Um, our, our two children are, are grown and, and on their own doing their own thing. Um, I, I'm educated as a geologist. I worked in uh, mineral exploration and then um, switched over to environmental consulting uh, for quite some time where I learned a lot about groundwater and environmental issues. Um, with that background, I became interested in, in Board of Health and, and town, uh, mostly through town water resources back in the 90s when we had a lot of water quality issues we were dealing with in the town center. Um, I, I joined the um, the water quality subcommittee of, of the Board of Health back then and have been with that ever since. Um, I'm running for my second term with Board of Health. Um, the past three years have been um, have been quite challenging and quite exciting in, in, in the realm of public health. Um, it, it's <laughs> no news to anyone. We've been dealing with this pandemic and all of the issues associated with it. Um, I found myself challenged as a geologist um, who initially got involved um, with um, caring about our, our water resources and trying to um, deal with public health from that angle. Um, I found myself as chair um, with you know, a geology background <laughs> during the pandemic. We have an outstanding um, group of people that are on the board 
and drew from medical and engineering and, um, and infectious disease expertise that we have on the board. So it, was, it wasn't as difficult a task. Um, we have a lot of extremely talented volunteers here in town that are um, um, so willing to help the town out. So we, we formed subcommittees to, to try to handle um, what we could locally with the pandemic issue. There are a number of issues um, before us in the coming years. Um, there are large developments underway um, that require uh, a lot of attention as far as protection of groundwater and um, treatment of the, uh, of the septic um, issues with those uh, large developments. It's, it's quite different than small residential develop, uh, uh, homes. Um, there's, we continue to deal with tick-borne and insect-borne illnesses, and uh, those will present a challenge in the years to come as the weather warms. And a new um, contaminant that's being found in groundwater, PFAs or polyfluoroalkyl substances, um, has impacted Carlisle. And we look forward to dealing with those challenges and helping the public out with that. Um, thanks very much. And I look forward to, to, to moving forward with the Board of Health. Thank you. A uh, quick question or request before we go any farther. If you are not, if you're just watching, you're not a participant, if you can mute your video, turn your video off, so that it's not so distracting and people can actually find on their screen the panelists who are actually talking, it would be helpful. So if you're an audience member and can turn off your video, that would be great. The next uh, office we have is for planning board. There are three three-year terms available. One of the candidates, Joseph Gushu, was not able to be here today, but we will hear from two write-in candidates um, and we'll explain how you have to do write-ins at the end of this. But the first candidate to write in is Eric Adams. Eric, your three minutes. Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you all. I'm really excited to be here this morning. Um, I've been uh, living in Carlisle with my wife uh, since two, well, for the last 14 years, 2008. Uh, we have three kids, um, all of whom started at the Red Balloon at the First Religious Society and have matriculated through the Carlisle School. My daughter, who's 13, is in seventh grade, so she's got just over a year left. Um, I grew up in Lexington, so native to the area, um, and um, basically, I, I love Carlisle. We, our first home together, my wife and I lived in Westford, about a mile from where we live now, and I found myself driving through Carlisle constantly and kind of with wide eyes. And um, so I was fortunate enough to purchase Phyllis Hughes's house, um, which I've done my very best to honor her legacy. Um, many people still refer to my house as Phyllis's house. So that's, uh, <laughs> it's always uh, funny to me. Um, in terms of the planning board, um, I, I've been a participant on the historic commission for the last four years um, and really enjoyed my time there. Um, I, I own a building and remodeling company, and so I felt like my expertise in uh, home building and architectural details um, suited suited me well for, for participating effectively in that forum, um, and for the last three years on the Zoning Board of Appeals as well. Um, and prior to participating on those boards as a, as a builder and representing my clients um, in many municipalities in greater Boston, I had a certain type of exposure sitting on one side of the table. And for the last uh, three and four years, respectively, on the Historic Commission and the ZBA, sitting on the other side of the table, I felt like um, my experience and knowledge was really um, uh, useful. And the planning board, I feel like, um, has some really large opportunities in front of it. I feel like Carla. Uh, growth and development are going to look like. And I want to make sure that I do everything in my power to both preserve and uphold the values and the culture and the um, legacy of Carlisle as a historic New England town, as well as help to provide prudent decisions uh, for what the next chapter of Carlisle might look like. Um, so I'm very pleased to be participating in our democracy. I agree, it's not a spectator sport and um, civic engagement is something I feel very strongly about. So thank you all. And uh, I look forward to hopefully 
adding the planning board to uh, my activities. Thank you. The next candidate for planning board, in the, he is also a write-in candidate, is Herschel, uh, Court Herschelman. So Mr. Herschelman, your three minutes. Thank you, uh, and good morning. Yes, my name is Court Herschelman. I'm a write-in candidate for the planning board. Uh, I am a newcomer to Carlisle. Uh, I came here as part of a job change from Maryland in 2018 and uh, started a job search. I, I live here now in Carlisle with my wife and three daughters, but as part of the job change, we started our housing search and uh, as part of a housing search, like most people, we looked at uh, not only Carlisle, but the surrounding towns, looking at town resources, schools, um, opportunities for recreation, and, and also uh, became enamored by the history of Carlisle and the surrounding towns. And as we did that, that research uh, combined with the fact that Carlisle is so close to a major city um, and the community here, uh, Carlisle became our clear choice uh, to, to find our new home. Uh, so as again, to as part of that research, we found that everything that, that drew us here are things that we wanna preserve. Uh, the, the gems that we have, we want to continue with. So while uh, allowing property owners to continue to exercise their rights and do things that they, they would like to do, I want to see that done uh, with deference and consideration to our neighbors and uh, continue to make Carlisle the, the great place that we found and make it continue to make it a great place where people want to continue to live. So. Um, I ask for your support uh, as a write-in candidate for the planning board uh, at the election. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank all of you for your willingness to serve. Now we will go to the panels for the contested rate. On your screen, you see the under planning board, the two write-in candidates, you need to write in their full names and their street address on the ballot. So make a note of that and uh, when you go to the polls. Now we go to the panels for contested races. Each candidate will give a one minute introduction. Uh, the order was determined, we drew straws for the order. Um, and then from that on, we will ask questions in a randomized order. The same people won't always follow the same people. We will ask questions, some from the Zoom audience for as long as time permits. And then each candidate will have one minute to add for a closing statement in the reverse order of the opening statements. So starting with the select board, there are two three-year seats and there are three candidates for those two seats, Marty Arnold, Travis Snell, and Brian Watterson. Each of you will have one minute for an opening statement and we'll start with, by drawing lots, we'll start with Barney Arnold. One minute. Thank you. Um, I'm really happy to be here this morning, and I appreciate all the people that have joined the Zoom. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. So I grew up in a military family. In fact, um, four generations of uh, relatives have served uh, our country uh, in the U.S. Army. And so the ethic of service to country and community uh, was, has really been strongly embedded in me. And uh, as I grew up, I uh, really wanted to act on that uh, value. And so right off the bat after college, I became a VISTA volunteer and then worked in um, as a community organizer, worked for a number of nonprofits. And then my uh, last paid job was right here in Carlisle as a public school kindergarten teacher. Um, and then when we uh, moved here in 1987, I was really looking forward to putting down roots. It's the first time I've owned a home. And it took very little time to realize that Carlisle was the place for us. Uh, we've been very happy here and uh, love this special community. Um, and so I would just like to have the opportunity to serve again by um, being reelected to the board, uh, the select board on May 10th. So thank you all very much. Thank you. And it looked like we were having a little problem with the timer for that one. So maybe we can get that worked out. Uh, the next candidate is Brian Watterson. Mr. Watterson, your minute. Excuse right. me, Nancy, before I start with Brian, Brian, I'm so sorry to interrupt. 
Uh, Nancy, would you like me to call stop to a candidate or would that be your role? Uh, I will stop if I can see the timer, but the timer isn't working right now. Oh, I, I not know. I, I will stop people when the timer, but it, let's see if the timer is working. Meanwhile, I've got a clock. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Oh, you're right. Something's happened. Okay. Brian Watterson. Perfect. You're right. Thank the timer you, is see. not working. So sorry. Do you want a moment to fix the timer or do you yes, want to continue? Please, uh, Pause timer, start timer. Julie, can you let me? Uh, Barbara, uh, maybe you can meet on that and I will I will time Mr. Watterson with my clock. Okay, thank Old you school. very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Second hand, Take Mr. It away. Watterson. Perfect, thank you, Nancy. Thank you to the league and thank you to everyone who's taking time out of their Saturday morning to join us today. Uh, my name is Brian Watterson. I've lived in town with my wife, who you'll meet a little bit later on this morning, um, since 2016. Uh, we have three girls, a third grader at CPS, a five-year-old who is uh, at CPS in the integrated preschool, and then our youngest is at Noah's Ark, but will be at CPS uh, next year. Um, like so many people, we were attracted to Carlisle because of the, the schools and because of the open space. Um, but what's really made this um, a special place for us is just uh, the sense of community. Um, and we've really loved that in the nearly six years that we've been here. Um, I currently serve as the chair of the Castle Playground Project. I am also the co-chair along with Dr. Seidel of the School Advisory Council. Um, and previous uh, responsibilities include the executive board at Kids House uh, and the um, master planning working group. Uh, just a little bit about my background before coming to Carlisle. Uh, I, have I think we have BA. to cut you off here. We, oh, we sorry. Catch, that, that's your minute. Uh, the next candidate up is uh, Travis Snell for your one minute introduction. Mute. You, you're on mute. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry about that. Um, so yes, I, hi. <laughs> I'm Travis Snell and uh, I, I live at 623 School Street and I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for organizing this event. My wife Liza and I moved to Carlisle 21 years ago. We first lived on Robbins Drive and after the birth of our daughter Susanna, we moved to our house on School Street. We have two kids, Susanna and Sam, who both attended the Carlisle School. Sam just graduated from eighth grade last year at the Carlisle Middle School after having started at the Noah's Ark Nursery School years ago, and both of them are currently at CHS. Um, we've had a very, very positive experience with the Carlisle School, and I think the school does a good job of preparing students for the future. Um, eight years ago, I joined the Zoning Board of Appeals as a way to contribute to the Carlisle community. Uh, for the past six years, I've been chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm most proud of the way I've worked hard to create a well-functioning uh, board that listens to people and thinks about the applications before us and then makes thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna cut you off because a minute is not very long it isn't <laughs> but we will uh let me just check barbara are we okay with the timer or you could just do it manually barbara you're on mute I'll, I'll, I'll Julie, you, Julie, can you uh, readmit? This is the disembodied voice of tech support. Please um, do time old school for a minute. I'm going to have to restart the timer software. Okay. So, Barbara, uh, we'll go through I, this. Just one minute, one minute responses to these questions. And again, right. candidates, a minute is not very long. You're right. So the first question, and the, these are in random order to you. The first question is, what are your top two priorities for the select board during your term? And the first, that goes first to Mr. Snell. Well, thank you. I think having lived in Carlisle for 21 years and watched Carlisle change, as well as thinking about what remains uh, constant throughout, I think we really need to um, focus on two things. One, as, as a member of the master plan advisory um, committee, uh, I think we're going to have to uh, really focus on implementing the master plan and adopting it for the town. 
And I think that's a good thing because it will provide some guidance and um, direction for where we're headed. And I think the, the second important immediate priority is um, we need to select a new town administrator um, who is going to be well qualified and um, hopefully will um, work well with the town and, and the values that we have. Um, I will say that you know we have an opportunity here to think longer term as well. And I look out a couple hundred years and think about what's important um, and what I'd like to see if I came back a couple hundred years from now. And uh, I think the open spaces and uh, the rural nature of our wonderful town are, are kind of a long-term commitment and uh, value that we have, as well as um, our, our top, top notch school is um, a really essential part of our community. So thank you. I think as priorities, those are the, the top. Thank you. Uh, next we have Ms. Arnold, your top two priorities. Thank you. I think the um, one big priority for me is the challenge that we have to balance um, some of the needs we have in town, like the police and fire stations that need to be either upgraded or, or new facilities. And uh, of course, there's a lot of interest in a community center um, and yet balance that with not overburdening taxpayers. Um, and so that's one big priority for me. Um, I think the other, and this is the many priorities, but I think another key one is um, looking at what we as a small community can do to be a model for addressing climate change in our own town. And I think there are some really interesting ways we can do that. Thank you. And Mr. Watterson, your, your top two priorities. Perfect, thank you. Um, yes, I'd like to echo Travis. I do think that implementing uh, the master plan that we've all worked so hard on over the, the last few years um, is going to be quite important. Um, you know, we wanna make sure that um, all that hard work doesn't just sit on a, on a shelf. Um, and, you know, within the master plan, you know, we'll be able to, to touch on, you know, many facets of the, of the planning for the town future. I also think as we bring on a new town administrator, and as we look at the, the work that the governance task force is doing, I also think we really have an opportunity in the years to come to think about how we can uh, optimize uh, the running of town government and, uh, you know, and make sure that it continues to, to meet the needs of all of us as we're in the 21st century. Thank you. Um, tech support, do we want the timer back or are we going to give it another a while yet? Still working on it. Okay. The next question, and some of you touched on this in your first answer, was the Carlisle Master Plan was recently released. Do you support the key recommendations of the master plan and what would you consider a couple of those key recommendations? So we'll start with uh, Mr. Watterson. Uh, I definitely uh, support the, the master plan. I mean, there's a lot of uh, fantastic content, fantastic recommendations. I think you know, the, the challenge now is to, to break it up into manageable pieces so we can actually start to implement and, and make progress to, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, some of the things that I do um, wholeheartedly support um, are the, the importance of really thinking about the character of Carlisle um, and how we, you know, how we want to, to see that shape or, you know, or not change uh, in the years to come. The importance of connectivity um, and access um, is critical as well. I think about the fact that I live about a mile from the town center, but it's just not safe to, to walk um, to the town center with, with children. Um, you know, I'd like to see that resolved. And then also, how can we be more um, fiscally diverse, fiscally stable uh, in the years to come? Thank you. Mr. Snell, your comments on the master plan. Sure. Well, for those who aren't as familiar, the master plan really had kind of five areas um, with Carlisle's community character, uh, fiscal sustainability, connectivity and access, environmental stewardship and caring community. And, and I, I think it would be hard for anyone to kind of disagree with, with those goals. And, and I think as Barney pointed out, the real 
um, challenge ahead of us is to really, how do we navigate? How do we use that as our roadmap going forward and build those various components into the future that we wanna see? So I do think it's valuable and I, I support the master plan. And I think that as far as the most important thing really is the character of the town. And I said in my opening statement or the last statement that, you know, you, I think we need to really look long-term and think about as we're changing and the world's changing and we're changing, which is a good thing, but we, we need to think about how we do that thoughtfully and, um, you know, retain the character uh, that is the town of Carlisle. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Hi. So I, uh, having been on the select board for this last three year term, um, I was a very active participant in the development of the master plan. I was the liaison from the select board to that committee. And so I know it <laughs> very well. Uh, and I really have to applaud the people that got involved uh, both in terms of developing it, but also all of the townspeople that participated in providing input. I mean, it's a really, really impressive effort. And so I will say that um, what uh, I feel is a really critical part of that plan is really the emphasis on coordination. And that means uh, bringing different boards together and bringing staff together and doing uh, the work of figuring out, okay, what are the things we're gonna tackle now? What can we do now? What, what is lo midterm, longer term? And also sort of being on the same page in terms of pursuing the action steps that are recommended. So I fully endorse the master plan. And um, I'd say the other thing is uh, the select board needs to really grapple with the planning board about that implementation. Thank you. You, you may get a, another chance to continue that thought. The next question is that the master plan calls for a greater interdepartmental information sharing and co cooperation, a quote, whole, whole of town governance approach. As a select board member, how would you ensure implementation of the plan and compliance across boards and committees? And as it happens, we start with Mrs. Ms. Arnold, so you can continue your thought from the last question. Okay, great. Um, yeah, um, one key thing is going to be the hiring of the new town administrator. And I'm actually on the screening committee that has begun the process to look at uh, resumes. Um, that person is gonna have a key role, a leadership role in the, what we call the daytime government, uh, you know, the paid staff. And then for the nighttime government, you know, which is all of the tremendous number of volunteers, um, I think the select board is gonna play a key role in bringing those boards together um, and looking at what, what are the specific steps recommended in the master plan that would logically sit with those boards or committees. Um, and so uh, I, I think the select board is gonna be a major uh, driver and also working with the town administrator and the rest of the department staff. Thank you, Mr. Watterson. How to bring everybody together? Yep, I think as we're looking to bring everybody together, um, communication is going to be very important. Uh, when I think about uh, projects that I've been on where I've done organizational design work and you know working with groups as they're, as they're changing the way they're working, it's just, important to remind everyone, you know, where where have we been? Where are we now? Where are we going? And knowing that there's going to be some uneasiness and probably a little bit of uh, disruption as, as change is happening. Um, and that is okay. Um, and I think it's going to be very important that um, the select board uh, together with the town administrator uh, really are working to, to drive that, making sure people understand what's coming next um, and continue to, to listen uh, and get uh, feedback uh, along the way. Thank you, Mr. Snell. Yep, and I, I think uh, similar to the other candidates that, uh, you know, Carlisle has often been, uh, there's comments that it's very siloed and I think it's important that we implement a master plan that gets utilized. Um, and to do that, there are recommendations in the master plan, but I think that the select board is really the nexus of where that happens. And I think as part of that, the town administrator is going to 
play a key role as well. And I think the select board should really um, stay on top of that and, and make sure that the administrator is implementing much of what is um, called for in the, in the master plan. So, um, and I think that the, the select board does a good job of reaching out to other boards. And I think we should continue to do that as a board um, throughout um, the town. So, thank you. Thank you. The next question, what should the town of Carlisle do to address the climate crisis? And we'll start with Mr. Watterson. Uh, yes, the climate crisis is, uh, you know, it's something that I think is increasingly top of mind for almost everybody uh, in this town. Uh, and, you know, I think we, I think we're doing good things already in terms of looking at the types of energy uh, that we have available, or even being very conscious as far as what is going to the transfer station um, and what's actually getting incinerated versus what is getting uh, reused. Um, you know, I think I'm really impressed in this town with this, this drive to, to reuse different products uh, between the swap shed or through Facebook and the buy nothing page and making sure that, that we're not just throwing uh, things away quickly. I also think that we have to really educate the town about what we can all do um, and think about how we can do it in a, a way that's manageable for people. Um, you know, we're, we're all busy, um, especially anyone with, you know, young families, we're busy running from one thing to another. And, um, you know, we want to address it um, in a way that we feel like we're making a difference. Thank you. Ms. Arnold. Yeah, I think that, um, as a small community, it's limited in what we can do, but we also, I think, do have uh, ways that we can um, educate and affect uh, the actions taken both by um, town government and also by the families and individuals that live here. And uh, so, for example, I think we should look at our um, guidelines through the planning board about um, what are the incentives we might offer to those that are doing construction here or renovating? What are the green technologies that we could support through incentives um, to you know, make our town more green? And similarly for uh, residents, you know, I was really excited about the event on Saturday, or, um, last Saturday, I guess it was, right? With the electric vehicle display up at the church. And that's the kind of thing we could be doing uh, across town and also helping people with installation of solar. So I know I could go on, but I see the time's up. So thank thanks. you. And Mr. Snell. Well, yeah, to build on what Barney was saying, I, I agree um, that, you know, our town has placed a, a really high emphasis on its environmental uh, stewardship and impact. And, you know, on old home day, we're, that's who we're celebrating is, is the conservationists, the people who really try to, to do the most for the environment. And so I think that those gestures of, you know, working towards it's not just gestures, but focus on that continues to show the importance that we place on it. I will say that professionally, I, um, I didn't get a chance to talk about my background, but I, I own and manage a uh, property, commercial property management firm. And we have environmental initiatives that we're we do for clients every year. We're, we have targets of, of things and ways that we need to make buildings more efficient and more um, energy compliant. And, and I think that I've worked with consultants and many people to, to implement those things. And I think that's an important thing that can be done throughout the town as well. So I, I think we're, we're moving towards that. Thank you. And I we've come to the point where we were going to take a question from chat. Lana, do you have a question for these candidates from the chat? At this point, no. <laughs> then we, fortunately, we, we have our own list of questions, so we will keep going with those. Nancy, Nancy, may I break in just to see if uh, uh, Julie has any instructions for me to reestablish our timing uh, device? Yes. Um, the timing, there is a new link, a new management link in the chat. Please try that and see if it'll work. I will do so. Now we need to see a blue sky uh, tile pop in, don't we? There's one yep. on my but screen right been, below you. Right, but it's been black all this time. I think twice 
the blue sky. It's not the um, screen of blue sky. Uh, yes. I think since we since we're running low on time and since the, I, the panels are working fine, okay, let's go with low tech. I think tech. we will abandon the thanks, the, uh, Nancy. Okay, we'll go, we'll go with low tech here. Executive yep. decision, excellent. Thank right. you, Barbara. Okay, we have time for one more question, then we'll go to closing statements. So the next question is: What are your views on the town's process for considering large donations for specific purposes? such as the recent recreation committee proposal for constructing pickleball, pickleball courts. Who should manage such offers to the town? Start with Mr. Snell. Well, I, you know, I think that that's an important discussion because as a town, I think we all need to have input on our resources, um, which are limited um, in pickleball in particular. We, we have limited town spaces that are allowed for various uses. And we have the ability as townspeople to vote to change those spaces. And, and I think that it's important um, as, as a select board member to really get as much input from the, the people within town as possible and to really kind of try to push those decisions back out to the town. I don't think it's any one person's decision to make whether some major decision like that gets undertaken. So I would really try to, to make sure we, we kind of follow our, our values of what we think is appropriate for the town, but also when we can to, to uh, make sure that, that the residents have an opportunity to speak to it and potentially vote on those major changes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Watterson. I think when it comes to any of these um, kind of initiatives, I do think that transparency and communication uh, are, are very important. Uh, you know, running with the playground uh, project for the last year and a little bit, uh, those two values have been at the forefront of all the work that we've done um, and wanting to make sure that the community feels like they have a, a chance to be heard. Um, in that particular um, situation with the playground, you know, there was no need to bring it to, to town meeting uh, but I do think that town meeting is a fantastic forum uh, for making decisions as a community. Um, you know, it was great to sit in the auditorium on Monday and, and listen to some of the debate and know that those of us who were there were, you know, making a, an active difference and really thinking about how we wanted to, to see things progress in town. So uh, lots of communication uh, and lots of uh, transparency along the way. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Yeah, having served on the select board for the last three years, of course, I was um, part of that uh, consideration of the donation for pickleball court. And I, I think we learned a lot um, as a leadership body uh, and thinking about the uh, other boards that were involved. Um, I absolutely uh, believe we need to consider uh, those kind of offers uh, in a, in a, way that allows for a lot of transparency and a lot of input from people in the community. And um, at the same time, I also think we have to uh, balance that with, you know, how, how you um, sort of address the needs of someone who might be making a donation and how they would feel about that. So I think part of what I learned was that we need to be much more clear at the very beginning and lay out what the process is going to be for considering something like that. And um, thank you. I'm going to I'm going to cut you off. Okay. Uh, I did get get a, a communication from Lana that there were some chat questions, but we are out of time for this. We have to go to closing statements because we have two more panels. If you have chat questions for the library or school committee people, please put them in early. Uh, we are going to go to closing statements now, and we'll start with Mr. Snell. Well, thank you um, to the league again, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have been nominated for the select board uh, after having lived in Carlisle for 21 years and served on the Zoning Board of Appeals for eight years. Um, I guess I would say, you know, I don't have all the answers um, uh, on where Carlisle is headed exactly and what it will become, though I think I have a good framework, um, a roadmap. Uh, using the master plan and having experience within the town. And that said, we have many challenges ahead of us on how we provide for a fiscally, environmentally, and 
socially sustainable future. Um, and while I don't have all the answers, I do have the ability to listen, and make thoughtful judgments on where we're headed and how to, and working with others to uh, make sure that we uh, move forward in the best way possible. Um, and uh, I really encourage uh, you to uh, you know, vote for me, but also to uh, ask others um, who I've served with on the Zoning Board of Appeals or within the community, because I think they can attest to how I operate my character and the decision-making that I, I undertake. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Arnold. Yeah, I'm so sorry we didn't have a chance to talk more because I see there's some really good questions in the chat about um, housing. Uh, which I didn't mention and should have as one of the key things we need to balance uh, in terms of, you know, my particular interest in making Carlisle a place that um, will allow a more diverse range of uh, people to live here. Um, and I also am very committed to the great efforts that are going on at the school around equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, I, I want to just mention that um, I think for me, uh, my interest in serving for another three years is uh, based on the strengths I think I bring to that role, which is um, leadership through listening, a real commitment to teamwork, um, a commitment to bringing people together, and um, a real desire to have input from as many different voices as possible. Uh, and so I just want to ask for your support on May 10th. Thank you. Thank you. And thank all three of you. We are now going to go to the panel for school committee race. If the school committee candidates will turn on their videos, that would be good. Uh, uh, Nancy, 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 Brian yes. uh, did not have a chance to give his closing. Ha! Ah. <laughs> My, my, my list was faulty. I'm sorry, Brian, please <laughs> go ahead. No, not a problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you everybody uh, for the time today. Um, you know, as I, I said at the start, I really do think that uh, Carlisle is a, is a special community. Uh, and I look forward to the opportunity to, to serve um, and to, to listen and really understand what's, uh, you know, what's important to everybody. Um, of course, I have uh, my own ideas and the master plan, uh, you know, has helped shape those. Um, but just know that I want to be uh, a resource uh, who, who listens um, and represents, uh, represents this town. I also would like to say, and as I said in my um, mosquito um, letter this week, for me, the most important thing, though, is that everyone goes out and votes um, on the 10th of May. Um, we have a, an opportunity to all take a, an active role in our uh, in the future of our town government. And I just encourage everyone uh, to vote a week from Tuesday. Thank you. And again, my apologies. This, this may all happen. Good. So uh, now we will go to the school committee race. Uh, there are two open school committee seats. There are four candidates for those seats. One of those candidates, Robert Egri, was invited but is not participating today. So the three candidates who are participating are Eva Mustafi, Sharon Witt, and Sarah Wilson. And uh, each of them will have one minute for an opening statement. And by as we drew, drew straws or lots for this, we will start with Sarah Wilson. Hi, uh, good, good morning. Thank you, Nancy. And many thanks to the league uh, for hosting us today and for the audience to, for tuning in. And as Lana noted, we're all supporting the democratic process by being here. So it's just something to celebrate. I grew up in Carlisle. Uh, much of my earlier work in education focused on supporting social emotional health of kids. And uh, since my kids started in the schools in Carlisle in 2013, I've continually tried to find ways to engage with the schools. I was involved in the PTO as a classroom parent and as library coordinator for several years. I've been on the school advisory council and I'm still president of the Carlisle Education Foundation. I'm very focused on my family and friends and I just love being part of the Carlisle community. So I think this is a unique place and that our schools reflect the caring attitude of our community members um, and the, the spirit of mutual respect in the face of differences. And um, I'm just proud to be part of that. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mustafa. Mustafi? You're, you're yes. muted. Oh, okay. Now okay. we're good. 
Okay, so well, let me stop my timer. Okay, so um, I just wanted to thank you, uh, thank the league for this opportunity and the candidates running um, as we make each other stronger, stronger, uh, stronger candidates. I'm running for the second term on a uh, school committee. I have served um, on both Carlisle and the regional bo uh, board. Um, I have moved to Carlisle 15 years ago and I fell in love with the town community, the schools, um, the way that our kids um, grow up uh, uh, and have this wonderful um, uh, childhood in, bub in the Carlisle bubble. Um, we are a multicultural fa family. We celebrate um, our cultural differences. We look, um, we celebrate, um, uh, we have different foods, different languages in our home, uh, but we look towards one goal and that's giving uh, kids, our kids, um, a home that is welcoming and loving. Thank you. And Ms. Witt, your opening statement. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you to the league for the opportunity and thank you for everyone participating. This is important work and it's collective work. Um, I am a six year resident of Carlisle. I moved here with my husband and two sons who are currently in second and fourth grade. Um, my volunteer efforts started with being a kindergarten bus monitor and has continued um, from there. Um, I think the future uh, is in the classroom, it's in the playground, it's in our community, it's diverse, it's beautiful. And that's something I want to be a part of to develop and to continue in an engaging and a valued manner. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will go to the questions. I'll ask them in random order. You'll each have one minute to answer each question. The first question is, what are your top two priorities for the school committee during your term? Let's start with Ms. Witt. Uh, my first priority is focusing on the social and emotional well-being and health of our students, staff, and administration. It's important. It's urgent. We have all recently gone through a pandemic, which is something we have never experienced. Um, we have lost some key developmental time to really develop our students. And that's important. The second one would be diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging. Uh, it's important, it's urgent, and I'm committed to that work. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, Ms. Wilson. Hi. Uh, so I mean, my primary goal as a, pri as a member of the school committee is to do my best to be well-informed and thoughtful as I approach uh, the matters of budget formation and policy development, which are the two primary duties of the school committee. And both of those matters require not, not only sensitivity to local concerns and objectives, but also familiarity with rules and regulations dictated by Massachusetts general laws and DESE guidelines uh, to ensure that we're in compliance with delivery of services when we're looking out for the well-being of our students and, and of our community. Um, but beyond the work of the fiscal oversight and ensuring that our policies support local district strategic goals um, and the well being of our students, I would say that, like, my reach goal. Of, of the schools, right? By being able to our work to the community effectively. And, uh, and by being sensitive and responsive to uh, community concerns and interests. Thank you. And Ms. Mustafi, are you there? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, I look at education and the use of our resources kind of in the longitudinal way from uh, K through 12 and how it translates into success for college. So I look at um, uh, two areas of focus. One is K through A focus on literacy, so all our children become strong leader, uh, readers, uh, uh, which is a determinant of educational su success and well-being. In my first term, I worked on to, uh, to support and improve early literacy for all the student services and for students with special needs. Um, and then the other uh, focus is um, so uh, the other focus is we must continue 
really uh, making sure that we continue this work as um, uh, the latest research-based methods and teaching on, on teaching and screenings have come out. Uh, the districts are put in a situation that is up to the districts to, uh, uh, to, to do that with fidelity um, and transparency to a uh, community of parents and, um, uh, and community. And then the second focus for me is- uh, I think we get I'm going to call time on this one. Thank you. Um, one minute is not enough. But let me go to the second question. And importantly, this question is came in from an eighth grade student. And that student asks, how will you make students feel safe and welcome in their learning environment? When I say safe, I mean the ability for students to be themselves without having to worry about criticism or threatening behavior. Let's start with Ms. Ms. Mustafa. Okay. Um, so, there, uh, so, so there is an area of, um, uh, of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion work that um, intersects um, as a school committee member with, um, with an area of implementation by superintendent of the schools. There is a lot of uh, work done currently um, uh, at the schools um, uh, connecting the community uh, resource, uh, community uh, resources such as the DEI CAC uh, group um, and um, building um, and building co connections for kids and safe places for kids in our schools uh, where they can um, um, uh, feel feel uh, free and um, and safe to uh, discuss uh, the issues um, that surround them um, uh, and by continually um, uh, supporting that uh, work where the community comes and um, comes together with the uh, superintendent and administration and the curriculum. Thank you. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cut you off there. Thank you, Ms. Witt. I think we have to start with naming and affirming all types of identities. Um, when we introduce language around uh, student identities and um, their self-concept, uh, we combat um, invisibility and isolation that students may feel. We have to model strategic vulnerability, invite students to uh, into self-authorship, let them tell us who they are and how they would like to be viewed. Uh, create identity safe spaces for students to have conversations, discussions, and agreements. And I think that's where we should start with that. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. So, I mean, I think the Carlisle schools have continually affirmed um, a commitment to social justice and have sought ways to counter any ideas or actions of bigotry that are rooted in bigotry. And, um, you know, when I chaired the Carlisle Policy Subcommittee, we expanded the definitions of discrimination and harassment in our policies to encompass a broader understanding of bigotry in our world. Um, we reaffirmed our commitment to both the right to equal educational opportunity and freedom from discrimination and the responsibility, the responsibility not to discriminate against others. Um, when we were reviewing our student rights and responsibilities policy. Um, and as a school committee, we also adopted an anti-racism resolution in June of 2020. So, but, but real social change comes from hard work to address underlying causes of inequality and intolerance. And so the schools, they must continue their efforts to recruit diverse staff, increase resources for more culturally inclusive and representative curricula and resources to support student uh, social emotional learning and raise awareness about prejudice and its history. And, and I applaud the work of the administrators, the staff and the community um, and the more recent collaboration with the DEI CAC to help all community members feel a sense Thank of you. belonging. Thank you. Uh, the next question, do our schools have a role in teaching children about topics such as sex education, cyber safety, wellness, and bullying? Starting with Ms. Wilson. The second one was what, cyber safety? Cyber safety. So do the schools have 
an obligation. Wrote, let me let me read it again because it was right. a, a it's a it's a lot it's a lot to unpack. A comprehensive, right. shall we say, question. Does the school have a role in teaching children about topics such as sex education, cyber safety, wellness, and bullying? So not what they should teach, but should they be teaching these things? Okay. They should teach, but should they be teaching these things? Um, is, is there a role? Is, is there a role? Well, I mean, our, our schools always align with you know, what we teach in the schools is, is fairly well laid out um, by Massachusetts, uh, by DESE guidelines. Um, and, um, and I think that we need to constantly align ourselves and check that we are meeting all of the needs of our students in, in what we teach um, to make sure that we are covering the most relevant and um, emergent um, issues a, a, as they come up. So, so um, and, and to make them, you know, informed uh, members of the community and of the world and um, to make sure that they're as, um, as prepared to, to go out into the, the larger non, non Carlisle bubble, I think. Thank you, Ms. Mustafi. So um, I, I wanted to second um, uh, Sarah's uh, answer here. Um, the curriculum is uh, laid out by um, DESE guidelines on standards and the curriculum. Uh, do I believe we should be teaching um, uh, 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 teaching our kids about cybersecurity and um, uh, uh, health and sex education? Uh, Education is age appropriate. We have children in elementary and middle school. Education around the, these topics should be age appropriate. Uh, it should align with Massachusetts guidelines. Um, there, are, uh, there is a place for the school um, to make sure that our, our, our students are prepared, that our students understand and um, their health and well-being is kept in, in mind as we prepare them for the world that um, waits outside. Uh, there are other resources that parents can always tap into um, and, um, and uh, those resources are always uh, uh, offered and provided by the school. Um, there is an organization in Concord parent-teacher uh, uh, education organization that uh, continuously has uh, workshops around uh, mental health, um, cyber safety, uh, social social media, which is- uh, Thank you. Coming up. I'm gonna have to turn you off. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Witt, your answer to this. Yes, I think the school does have a responsibility to teach those things. They have our students during some of their key developmental phases. Um, cyber safety, there's technology in the school. They have to know how to protect themselves. Um, that links to bullying. That's a new avenue um, for bullying through technology and cyber issues. Um, I think the school should, in, in guidelines with the state, teach about sex education. It's usually about changes that are going to occur to your body, how to have healthy identities. And when you have healthy identities, you can have healthy relationships. Uh, so I think that is a responsibility of the school and it should be taught in an age appropriate manner. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question. I'm gonna ask Lana if there's one in the chat that, that would be good. I was told that the one question that the person had has been answered, <laughs> so thank you. So no. we'll, we'll go on. We'll go on with the the last question be from the group that we had. So, as a member of the Carlisle Public School Committee, there will be an opportunity for you to serve on the Concord Carlisle Regional School Committee. What is your understanding of this role, and are there changes you would like to see in the regional agreement? And start with Ms. Witt. Do you need that read again? Any no, thank you. Okay. Um, the role there is to, um, as a sister community, represent our students, both um, transitioning to the high school and also our students who are currently there. Um, I, I think we need to work on all of the students who are being educated at the Concord College High School. And that includes really creating high quality um, connections and uh, 
access to um, our education and access to discussions about our education and how we go about that so that it benefits all of our students. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Mustafi. Um, okay, so uh, no, I would not want to uh, reopen the, um, the uh, regional, uh, uh, the agreement. Uh, we have looked at it. Uh, it would take a long time to, um, we, uh, uh, the school committee uh, has looked at it, um, cleaned up uh, uh, edits. Um, uh, it would take, it would be a very lengthy uh, uh, process to, uh, to, uh, uh, to reopen um, and go through this. Um, uh, the, uh, with the current edits, um, the agreement should stay in place and it doesn't, um, it doesn't require any other changes. In terms of high school, uh, I am um, uh, I I see a big uh, big need, and that is um, uh, color. Uh, so uh, I feel like um, my focus at, at the high school right now is in enhancing college readiness by expanding opportunities for all students with different learning profiles. I aim to uh, implement the early college and enrollment uh, and. Uh, uh, dual enrollment courses as colleges are moving away from standardized testing. Uh, I feel like we need to continue focusing on wellness and mental health needs of okay, our students. And, and I need to cut you off, so, so thank you. We need to go to closing statements for this panel now. You'll should, each I have a, you'll each have, should I answer that question? Oh, I'm sorry. Steve, uh, thank there. you for stopping me. I, too many little pieces here. <laughs> yes, thank you, Sarah. Uh, so, so my understanding of the role um, that, that we play in the region, well, I've been, in, I've been um, on the region for two years and I've been chair of the region for two years. Uh, so I have intimate familiarity with, with the region and it's actually, you know, I have to remind myself while I'm there that I am I'm representing the interests of Carlisle um, and, and while really focusing on regional issues um, as they are. And so it's kind of that interplay that relationship of how the Carlisle School Committee and the Regional School Committee, um, how they can have efficiencies, but how they can maintain their own independent um, identities is, is really critical. In terms of the regional agreement, um, if someone was to present, I guess, a substantial reason, a potential gain that could come from, from opening the region, I would entertain evaluating that, um, weighing the pros and, and cons of doing so. Um, and all right, thank you. Now we will go to closing statements and these are in the reverse order from the opening statements. Each of you will have one minute and we start with uh, Ms. Witt, your, your closing statement. Hi, um, I would say in closing, I am running uh, to be on the school committee because I think I'm the best candidate in light of the current issues uh, here in Carlisle and nationally and worldwide. Um, Carlisle's needs have evolved and changed um, very much uh, like its population. Um, I think I will serve without reservation for all students. I will sit in trust for our community. Uh, my leadership style, my work style, um, which is committed, caring, and collaborative, will add value um, to the school committee board. And really, I truly um, believe in understanding and participating in a democratic process in a open and collaborative manner. Uh, so vote on May 10th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mustafi. Your closing statement. Okay. So I, I just wanted to say that each uh, one of us comes from our own lived and experience. And that do you is- want, Do you want to turn your video on first? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a challenge navigating the stopwatch tool. Okay, thank you. Thank you, okay. Can I stop? Start? Yes, no, start over, start from the beginning. Start over. Okay, thank you. So uh, each one of us uh, comes from our own lived in experience and that is a good thing and it gives us a different perspective. I'm an immigrant married to a minority group as a such, I believe that I can bring a, this sensitivity to the work and I'm also mindful that I represent the interests of all students and all of the community and my personal experience 
only helps me understand the critical importance of teaching our kids kindness and respect to the human differences. Um, I, um, the challenges of public uh, education in Carlisle is very real, but we are blessed that we, are, we have involved parents, exceptional teachers, and support, supportive leadership. I look forward to continue, continue with our work. Um, I uh, want to finish the work. I'm very passionate about this. I, I do have a child with dyslexia. I do understand what it is uh, to, to have trouble reading and not have the doors open. I want to make sure that those do doors are open for all of our kids. We need to keep um, making real strides so we could protect and enhance our educational excellence that we want and, uh, and the students benefit from. Uh, we need to bring everyone along this educational journey. It's not enough to claim everyone has equal opportunity on paper. We need to assure that every child has the tools and resources that they need to take advantage of this equal Thank opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. I need to stop you now. Uh, Ms. Wilson, your closing statement. Um, so, uh, I mean, first of all, I just want to say, I, I think it's terrific that, that we have three incredibly talented and, and qualified candidates um, for, for these two open seats. Um, and uh, I, I'm just, I, I hope that lots of people come out and vote and really appreciate and, um, and maybe like reaffirm like what it is to, to put our, to put, to put yourself out there um, in this way. And, uh, and it, you know, this is, this is a privileged position to be in. Um, in such a contested race. Um, and I just want to thank, thank the community for, you know, giving me the opportunity to try to continue my work uh, towards uh, working for, you know, fiscal and, and, and educational and social emotional um, goals of the schools in a sustainable fashion. I mean, that's what I've really learned from my three years um, on the school committee so far is that whatever we do, it, it needs to be sustainable. It needs to work for the administrations, um, it needs to be doable and it needs to be financially sound. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you. And now we'll go to our final contested panel for this morning. For the Library Board of Trustees, there's one three-year seat open and there are two candidates for that seat, uh, Caitlin Watterson and Helen Young. So if, if you will come up, yes, and each of you will have one minute for an opening statement. And we start by drawing, by drawing straws. Uh, Caitlin Watterson will start with an opening statement. Okay, good morning. Thank you uh, to the league for arranging this and the opportunity today. And hi to Helen. Um, it's nice to see you. Um, uh, my name is Kaylin Watterson. You heard from my husband earlier. This is fun. We're both on the ballot this year. We moved to Carlisle uh, about six years ago. We have three young daughters and they are all very avid library goers as, you know, as, are, as am I. I love our library and I think I realized during the pandemic just how valuable of a resource the library was to us, to our community. And when I saw that there was a seat open, I thought to, to help them out, to be a trustee, I thought I'd like to do that. I'd like to get further involved. And so I collected signatures and, and here we are. So that's just a bit about me and I'm hopeful for the opportunity to get to participate. Thank you, Ms. Young. Your opening statement. Well, like Caitlin, I love the library, uh, and, and uh, I think it's a, it, it's great for the town to have two of us running for this seat. Uh, I. I um, I've lived in Carlisle for 53 years, been a, a, a very uh, devoted patron of the library uh, and, and of all of its programs uh, for, for all of the years that I've lived here. Um, I, I saw that there were uh, originally in the caucus, no one running and thought, oh, I've always thought I'd like to do this. So I signed up, I, I got nomination papers. And, and anyway, I think the town will be well served, whichever of us it chooses. My goodness, what a friendly candidate's night. <laughs> <laughs> Then uh, here is the first question for the two of you. What are your top two priorities for the library during your term? And again, you have one minute each to answer this. So start with Ms. Young, top two priorities. Okay, um, I guess number one might be to uh, uh, support the 
ongoing effort to improve the interior of the library. It's lovely, uh, but I gather there are some problems, uh, physical problems with, have been with the heating system. And also it's been the same for many, many years. Maybe we need some, uh, a little refreshing. Um, I also I want to support the Friends of the Library programs, uh, which I think are very much enjoyed by many, many uh, uh, townspeople. Yes, thank you. Ms. Watterson, your top two priorities. Similarly, I think my top two priorities would be just to continue, obviously, to support the library. My first uh, the renovation that's upcoming, there will be a major capital campaign for that. That's a really exciting opportunity and something that I look forward, well, hopefully look forward to getting involved in uh, because that will give our town and the library a lot of opportunities to cater to different groups, have separate areas for people to, to congregate and quiet study space, children's room, a teen area, things of that nature. And then my second priority would be just continued terrific programs for the community, library passes, what other things could we be doing to, to expand our offerings for people of all ages? I think the library does a really great job, but there's always more to do, right? So, so helping with that as well, working with the librarians and then the other trustees as well. Thank you. The next question is sort of a, in case people don't know, what is the role of the library trustees and how much authority do they have? Start with Ms. Watterson. Okay, so the library trustees, there are three at any given time and they work, they oversee the head librarian and they have three different responsibilities which rotate in any given year. So there's a, an overseer, a president, if you will, a treasurer and a secretary. And they work with the, as I said, the head librarian currently, um, and they they help make decisions, fiscal responsibility, things of that nature. And then it, was there a second part to your question? Um, how much authority do they have? <laughs> well, a great deal because they oversee the, the head librarian. Okay. And Ms. Young, your answer to that. I'm not sure what I can add uh, to uh, what Caitlin has already said, but uh, um, <clears throat> we, I, the, the uh, trustees, I believe, are in charge of appointing the head uh, librarian when when uh, that is when a change is needed, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have a lot to add. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next question then. Should the Gleason make a deliberate effort to increase its offerings of materials that reflect racial, cultural, and gender diversity? Starting with Ms. Ms. Young on this one. Yes, I think they they should. I um, uh, I think they that the offerings by the library are quite diverse, but I think that more can could be done, and I would love to see more efforts made in uh, uh, in that regard. Um, perhaps more uh, of the, although this is the friends of the library, not the library trustees who decide this, uh, the, the speaker programs and uh, could be more diverse, I think. Thank you. Ms. Watterson. Yeah, well, I think my turn to say I don't necessarily have more to add. I agree with, with what Helen's just said. Yes, absolutely. I think diversity is very important. I mean, candidates in all three of these races have talked about the importance of that and to bringing more to Carlisle. Certainly reading materials is one way to offer that to everybody who would be interested in availing themselves of those. I mean, we have physical materials. We have many digital materials that are available. I think there are a great number of diverse books that are available, certainly in the children's room that we, we take advantage of and adult offerings as well, but there's always room to get more books, right? And, and, and hopefully people, yes, I is my answer. Thank you. This is a two-parter. What is your position 
in the current national discussion of appropriate materials for children and teens? And what should the Gleason's policy be if residents request that material, materials be removed from the library? So this is basically a book banning question. Yeah. We'll start with Ms. Watterson. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Just me break. The, the yes. current position and the national scheme, and then also if the Gleason yeah. is asked to ban books. Yeah, let me correct? just read it real quick. What is your position in the current national discussion of appropriate materials for children and teens? And what should the Gleason's policy be if a resident requests that materials be removed from the library? Well, I mean, I think we have freedom of speech here in this nation, so I don't think that um, I mean, I guess this is the second part. I, I think that it's up to parents to determine what their children should and should not read and have access to. Obviously, with the internet, that's more and more difficult. Um, we certainly see that here with, you know, an eight-year-old who has an iPad and is looking at different things and asks questions about things. But I think it's down to parents to, to police that, not the library um, or the schools. Um, I mean, for age appropriate material, right? And then as far as banning books, I think there's got to, there would be a very fine line as far as banning books, but no, I don't think I would support book banning as a whole. Thank you. Ms. Young. I quite agree with uh, Caitlin. I definitely would not support any form of book banning, uh, including uh, political ideas I don't agree with. <laughs> it should all be there and all be available. I do think that parents in terms of, of uh, material that might not be appropriate for uh, some ages, I think that's up to the parents. I would not like to see the town uh, in, in, as, uh, as a town library uh, getting into that. Thank you. Let me see if there's a question from the chat. Lama, anybody have a question to this group from the chat? No. Okay, then we'll go on with the, the questions we have. I, I think we have time for one more question and then closing statements. So do you feel that there are underser underserved populations in Carlisle when it comes to the library? If there are, what steps would you take to ensure that these populations have an equal voice and an equitable access to library resources and services. And start with Ms. Young. Well, I am not aware of groups who are underserved, but I would certainly like to encourage anyone who feels underserved in any way to contact the librarian, the library and uh, the head librarian. And if I am a trustee to contact me, um, I, I think that that uh, materials should be there for everyone. Thank you, Ms. Watterson. Hey, I agree. I'm not aware of any population that is underserved. I think as a community, we are highly reliant on our own personal vehicles for transportation. And so transportation is probably not a barrier to access to the library as such. But certainly, I think that if that was an issue for, for someone that we could look at an opportunity, I mean, for a delivery service, you know, for an individual that that could be something that a, you know, a, a niche group could, could handle. If someone was in need of a book, book delivery, um, but I don't know that that's an, an actual need that, that exists, right? I think um, if there was a group that was underserved though, that we could certainly take steps to investigate more about how we could help them. I know the library did a terrific job with, curbside delivery and different offerings on Zoom and the whole nine yards. So I think that the accessibility to the library has certainly increased in the past two years. Um, and, but yes, I'm not aware of any other groups who are not uh, currently represented. Thank you both. And now we will go to your closing statements in the opposite order from your opening statements, which means that Ms. Young goes first with her closing statement for one minute. Well, I have, uh, uh, as I think I've said, or maybe I haven't, I've been
been in Carlisle for uh, 53 years. I've always felt I would love to serve on the uh, library as a library trustee, uh, just because I care about the library so much. Uh, but so I think you have a, cho uh, uh, a choice of new blood or experience, and both of those are assets. And uh, I, I think the choice either way will be a good one. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Watterson. I think I think um, both Helen and I pulled papers because we care about the library. I don't think either of us expected that this would be a contested race and that we'd have an opportunity to sit and answer questions today. Um, I, I think we would both really like to participate in getting more involved in the library. And I think really just the most important thing, though, is I, I guess we're the group who's taken the time on a Saturday morning to listen in is probably going to be showing up at town hall on May 10th anyway, but I think just continue to spread the word and encourage your friends and neighbors to get out there and vote. Um, I think that that's really the most important thing here. So I hope I'm given the opportunity and uh, we'll look forward to seeing what happens on May 10th. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you and all of the other candidates for participating this morning and for your willingness to serve. It's what makes the, our towns work, is people willing to do these jobs. I'm going to now turn the program back over to Lana Zamaro for final voting information. Lana. Well, I, I've got to say, I want to just congratulate all the candidates uh, and wish them well. Uh, and just say you are all the literal and symbolic embodiment of democracy at work. And I'm going to second uh, some of the comments about the need to vote. Here's the voting information that's most relevant at this point in time. Um, don't forget May 10th. Uh, we uh, have a, a, a history of not the highest turnout for local elections. Uh, so I hope we can turn that around. And it isn't just the people in this audience, but you know other people who live in town. So please do what you can to encourage your friends and neighbors to, to get out and vote. It is one of the most important responsibilities we have as citizens. Uh, again, I want to thank you all. And I want to thank, thank you all particularly for, for hanging in there while we uh, worked with some technical issues this time. Um, and with that, we are going to close. Oh, I just see a note here that volunteers are still needed for vote counting on the evening of May 10th. Another opportunity to jump in and do your part uh, in the democratic process. So thank you for that, uh, that note in the chat. Um, and with that, uh, I wish you all a good day and uh, go out and enjoy some sunshine now. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>